are very proud to propose a motion that recognises that under the status quo, effort after effort has failed to do anything substantial about the glaring inequality between men and women in both the developing and developing <coughs> world. A world in which 90% of profit continues to be owned by the men, in which the Forbes Top 100 continues to be dominated overwhelmingly by men, but perhaps most importantly, a world in which at the very lowest income bracket, it is women overwhelmingly who are discriminated against and left to the vagaries of life and insecurity and discrimination and violence in their own home. We propose a model in which in both the developed and developing world, because we think that we are tired of the trope that says that discrimination against women is something that is exclusive to the developing world, it is just not true and we are quite happy to debate in both those worlds. We are happy in, in both those worlds to argue for special economic zones, a model which has already been used in the past. This is a model in which we say to businesses, if you invest in this area, you will get tax cuts, you will get preferences on tariffs. We will do everything it takes to make it a lower transaction cost for you to invest in this city, to hire in this, in this city, and to work in this city. These are policies that we think should be crafted by, women, by female politicians, where there are female politicians, by those groups that are arguing against discrimination against women that already exist in both the developed and developing world. This is something that we want to make as inclusive as possible. And what we want to do is ensure that it is simply the law that for those cities where these special economic zone benefits apply, you have to hire women in management positions. Question. You have to hire women throughout your workforce. No, thank you. All economic activities, except the purchase of goods and services, have to be done by women. Now, we do see still possibilities for men, of course, to live in these cities. They will be buying many of the goods and services. They could even be potentially working outside of the cities, Question. as is often the case already under the status quo. No, thank you. But the point is this. These will be cities in which 100% of production and management is done by women. And the returns for companies to invest in those cities is enormous. So, let's talk first of all Question. about what the problem is. No, thank you. The problem is we have an overwhelming amount of discrimination against women in the workforce, in the economy. Why is that so? Number one, it's often because there is simply active discrimination. There are men out there who can see that women pose a very real economic threat to them. There are men out there who have grown up in households where they thought that a woman's place was in the home. There are men out there that have grown up with the idea Question. that it is simply contrary to their religion for women to participate in economic activities. And there's been a particular interpretation that we think is wrong that's been given to them that confirms that. No, thank you you often get that very real act of discrimination. And we have to acknowledge at the outset of this debate that the overwhelming majority of states do not have discrimination laws on their books that prevent that from happening, that prevent a male employer Boys. from saying to a woman, I will not hire Sir. you because you are a woman. No, thank you both. And we think that that is wrong. Even if it is the case that you do have those discrimination laws on the books, you still have implicit bias. And that applies to both the top and the bottom of companies. This is an implicit bias that says, sure, we will meet your quota laws. Sure, we will meet affirmative action regulation. We will hire women, but we will not put them into positions of leadership. And if we do put them into positions of leadership, we'll put them in the soft leadership skills. We will do everything we can to sideline and marginalize women Question. in our workforce. No, thank you. And often it's not done with, and in fact, we think in many cases it's not done with any kind of deliberate, conscious sense of discrimination against those women. It is simply done on the basis of a selection of particular assumptions about women that is continually affirmed over and over again. Perhaps what's most troubling is that every time those assumptions are confirmed, it has a double effect. It confirms it for men, but it also confirms it for women. And we think that that is a very real problem when every time you send a message to the woman that is applying for a job as a CEO or a strong management position, that she is not qualified to do it. It makes it harder for her to continue progressing in the workforce. It confirms her own self-doubts potentially, and it also sends a very negative signal to other women in the initial workforce. No, thank you. We also think we have very strong socialized networks. So even if, for instance, you improve affirmative action for women in schools, you still have uh, old boys networks where men <coughs> stick together. They socialize more often in the corporate world, and they are more likely to back each other up in a way that is very counterproductive for women getting ahead in the workforce. We think that that is a big problem. We also think that women, uh, and we see this over and over again when it comes to negotiation skills uh, and negotiation experience, women are at a disadvantage to men and end up with a situation where both because of that, but also because of serious assumptions about whether or not women should be the main child rearers and a lack of support for men also taking a role which we think is valuable in looking after children, women end up getting completely screwed over whereby they don't end up with a specialised, tailored uh, package that allows them to look after children Question. as well as participating in the workforce or being able to share responsibilities with men. No, thank you. We think that this is a problem at the top, but it is perhaps worst of all at the bottom, where women are overwhelmingly denied possibilities in semi-skilled manual labour and they're not protected by discrimination legislation. How does this change it? 
It changes it by lowering the transaction costs for businesses to move into these cities. That means you've dramatically improved the bargaining power of women in those cities. We want to make this very clear. We think that this has long-term demonstrative effects for women outside those cities. But even if we accept uh, analysis from the opposition that that's not the case, we think that just on the ground, for women in those cities, and that's a lot of women, Point we think that this is an incredibly positive model. I'll take you go. If most businesses are owned by men and there is enormous economic gain to be had, why won't the male-owned businesses outbid the very few number of female-owned businesses for these zones? Because you're lowering the transaction costs for, city, for, for businesses to move into these cities, right? So if you have, uh, let's say you're a woman who has a, has a small struggling business, right? And you can't get any opportunities in your country under the status quo. What this model does is it says we're going to give you a massive tax break if you move into this particular city. We think that's an incredibly powerful thing that increases the number of female-owned businesses. If you are a male that owns a business, if you want to move into this city, fine, do that. You're going to have to uh, ensure that some of the subsidiary is actually owned and managed by women. That is a very powerful thing. That's good for those women on the ground. It also means your entire workforce has to be women. That is an incredibly powerful thing. And for those women that are at the top in the management, but even also at the bottom, you improve the chances that they're going to be able to work their way up through the corporate ladder to ultimately owning the entire business. You get more women working with each other. We think that, that is a very powerful thing in showing women how to work better, how to socialise better, how to ensure that they can support each other as a network. You get women being able to show a demonstrative effect to other women throughout the country, to their daughters, to their sons, to their husbands, that it is, is right for women to be in the workforce, that it is economically beneficial for women to be in the workforce, that it is not contrary to any of their existing assumptions about whether or not there will be a harmful effect on the raising of their children. All of those stupid assumptions that we think are just unreasonable and are contrary to evidence, we can rebut through a demonstrative effect because these cities can and will work. But even if we don't accept that, for those women on the ground, there's just more jobs, there's just more management and more income. Income means more choice over your life. It increases your capacity to say to your husband, to say to your spouse, you can't hit me because I actually have the capacity to leave the home and buy my own house, to buy my own independent security. That means we reduce domestic violence. It means we reduce emotional abuse. It means we reduce the capacity for men to, to determine the choices of women in their lives. Tasha is going to speak about the developing world. We are very proud to propose.